Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Rock Family Church. Let's go ahead and stand up. How are you doing this morning? Good. We doing good? Like, uh, you enjoying the break from the hot weather this weekend? I, I, I enjoyed the weather yesterday. All right. My name's Diane, and I'm going to lead praise and worship this morning, so we're going to re- get ready to sing a few songs. We got a new song, this first one. It's really fun, so let's, um, let's just get into it. Jesus' name, lives made whole, hearts 
Father, thank you for your freedom. Thank you for the freedom that's in you, Lord God. The freedom, the freedom, freedom to live free from our past, to live free from our burdens. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you that you are working in us and shaping in us to perfect us into that, that true and pure and glorious bride that you are coming back for, Lord God. We thank you that you are showing us how to walk in, in your love and to be prepared for your spirit, Lord. We thank you, Lord God. We praise you, Father. Thank you, Lord. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power. There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. So there is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power. Jesus, to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Awesome vision, sacrifice, so free. Jesus, to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. There's an army, there's an army rising up, there's an army.
for you. Let's just praise him. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for all you've done in our lives, Lord God. Praise you, Father. We praise you, Father. Thank you. Thank you for all those chains you've broken, for setting us free. Thank you, Lord God. There's a place for 
thank you that you're making a place for us, Lord God. Thank you. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you that we can call ourselves your children, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. And thank you that you chose us, Lord. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am thank you, God, that you are so good. Thank you for your presence here. Thank you, Lord, that you brought us together, God. Lord, we love you. We thank you for this time. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, the elementary kids, you guys can go ahead and go back to your class. Everybody else can be seated. Good morning, everybody. How you guys doing? Welcome. Welcome. All right. Good morning. Welcome to Rock Family Church. My name is Conrad. My wife and I are the youth pastors here at Rock Family Church. Thank you, Ryan. I appreciate it. I'm part of the lead team here. Um, if it is your very first time, thanks for being here. We're so glad you are here. Um, uh, there's a connect card in the seat pocket in front of you, in one of the seat pockets in front of you. Uh, fill that out. Drop it in the offering bucket when it comes by. Uh, if you're watching online, just put in the comments, hey, this is my first time, and we are so glad you are here. Um, when we dismiss, um, we've got this next steps table in the back. Uh, one of us, part of the lead team, will be back there to greet you, give you a gift, just make connection with you. Um, it'll either be me or Ryan. One of us will be back there. So, uh, And so please do that just so we can uh, get to know you. Here's some things you need to know about we've got coming up. Uh, kids and youth camps are next week. Yes, it's exciting. Um, youth camp, some parents are cheering because their kids will be gone for a week. Uh, I'm going with your kids next week. It's going to be a good time. Um, so here's what I would like from you, and you're like, if I don't have a kid or I'm not going, why are you telling me this? Because I want your, you to pray for us. Uh, we need you to pray that kids and youth will be impacted. Uh, pray for our safety. Pray for that the Spirit will lead us. So um, we need your prayers for that. Also, uh, for youth parents, if you have a kid going to summer camp, we're meeting right after service right here. We've got a quick meeting just to kind of go over the information with you, make sure we're all on the same page, and you know, make sure you get my cell phone number and all that stuff so we make sure that... Um, we, we're all 
go have everything go in the right direction. Am I leaving something out on that? All right, meet with me. Um, we're only $150 away from camp being paid in full for kids and youth and the missionary kids and missionaries that we are paying for. That's exciting. Um, in case you're wondering, um, so we're talking, we've got, what, three kids going to youth camp along with two leaders, and, or children's camp, and then youth camp, there's 16 of us going total, is that right? And so that's hotels, all the, all the money for the camp. Also, we are paying for the missionaries, their hotels, their camp. Um, so you guys have done phenomenal, and we appreciate, like I said, um, renting vehicles for all of us to go down. It's an, it's an expensive thing, um, and you guys have just been so generous. And like I said, we're $150 away from covering all of our expenses. So that's awesome. Uh, missionaries from Uganda, speaking of the missionaries that are coming, the, the Cat, Catanella family uh, is going to be here next Sunday. They're missionaries that we support in Uganda. Um, was it last year or a couple years ago, uh, we sent a team to Uganda with, to, to be with them and to minister with them. Pastor Todd was one of them. But they will be here and ministering next week. Also, they are going to have a table with Ugandan souvenirs, so bring money and some extra cash for that, just if you would be interested in that. So that's going to be awesome. I always love hearing about our missionaries and what, what impact you are having literally on the other side of the world. Okay, last thing. RFC Makeover Zitzman Edition is Saturday, July 9th. Starts at 9 a.m. We are redoing the teacher's lounge. That's what I said, Saturday, July 29th, right? Yes. Oh, and there's also some July 15th. That's this Saturday. There, if you are available and you're interested in, in helping with working on the ceiling there. It's going to be a little more manual labor, a little more intense work. Um, talk to Ryan. Sure. You're welcome. All yeah. right. And okay. with that, take 60 seconds. We're going to take 60 seconds. Greet somebody. High five somebody. Introduce, inter, introduce yourself. And I'm going to stop talking. English. <sighs> That must be my cue to get started here. So, well, good morning. My name is Ryan Shecker. I'm also part of the lead team uh, with the church. I'm also, you probably saw me here with that, but uh, we also do a lot of other things around the church. So if you're interested in helping out with that, with any of the youth or the, the youth <laughs> yes. or any of the other teams in the church, there are signups in the hallway. Take a look at that and um, be sure to, to put your name out there. Um, so first thing we're going to do is take up our offering. So as Conrad just said, we're only $150 shy of paying for camp. So if you want to, I'm sorry, not anymore. Not anymore. Praise God, we're fully paid for, for camp. So that is awesome. So as you can see on the monitors here, we have four ways to pay or to, to give, to pay, give, you know, whatever I'm saying. Uh, you can do online through the website, rockfamilychurch.net. You can do a text to give. You can mail it into the church. You can uh, give it to the, uh, one of the uh, ushers. We pass the buckets here in just a minute. Um, you know, we're doing a lot of great things in the community. The, the makeover at Zitzman 
that is something that, that our church is paying for. The, the school is not, doing, is not paying for any of that. They're providing a couple little minor things, uh, like a massage chair for their teachers. But we're the ones going in and, doing, and paying for the paint, paying for some of the furniture, the shelving, things like that. So your giving helps us get out in the community and make a name for ourselves, but more spread good cheer, spread the word throughout the world and through our community. So real quick, let's just pray all the offering for the, the guys to uh, pick it up. So uh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for the service. Uh, but more importantly, we just thank you for all the good things in our lives. We thank you that Jesus Christ died on the cross for us and saved us. Uh, we just lift up our pastor and our friends that are in Guatemala. We thank you for their safety, for their, co their coming and their going. You're sending your angels to protect them and watch over them. Bless this offering. Bless those who give to the church, Lord. We just give you thanks and praise that it is pressed down, shaken together, returned back to them in, in numerous ways. We thank you for the promotions and the, and the bonuses and everything else that's coming in. We just give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Speaking of Pastor Todd and our team in Guatemala, we do have a quick video. Now, you have to kind of forgive the, the quality. It came in just, to, just right before service this morning. So if we can go ahead and play that real quick. Buenos dias, <laughs> la iglesia, familia de Roca. Good morning, Rye Family Church. Hey, we are here in Antigua, Guatemala. We are getting ready for the church service this morning as well. And know you are all starting yours. So we just want to say good morning and have an amazing service from Antigua, Guatemala. Bye. Buenos dias, <laughs> la iglesia, familia de Roca. Good morning, Rock Family Church. Hey, we are here in Antigua, Guatemala. We are getting ready for the church service this morning as well. And know you are all starting yours. So we just want to say good morning and have an amazing service from Antigua, Guatemala. Bye. So they're down there. They're working. They're having fun. Uh, but more importantly, they're supporting the uh, people down there that we support on a regular basis as well. So they're Trying to, they're helping them build a couple of dormitories, I believe, and um, pastors preaching a couple of times. So they're having a good time with that, and glad to see they made it down safe. And we do expect they'll they'll come home uh, ne safe next weekend, just in time for our friends from Guatemala to come up here, and uh, or Uganda. Thank you. Yeah. Got too many things going on here. So thanks. <laughs> All right. Well, um, good morning. As I said, my name is Ryan. Um, I don't get to do this very often, so when I, when I do, I, I, I really appreciate it. Um, it does, does me a lot of good, and I hope I have something for you this morning. So one of the things I want to look at here is, um, you know, you ever look at somebody, look at something, and think that, hey, I can do that. I can do that better than they can. I can do what he does. I can do what she does. Why is she getting all the glory where I'm not, right? So we start thinking about copying them, right? We start thinking about how we can uh, imitate them. But copying and imitation can be frustrating and really works out the way you think that it will go or give the results that you uh, think that you should get, especially if you're imitating things from the world and less, uh, and less of what a godly example would be. So, but not all copying is bad. Not all copying will get you that fail on, that Mr. on Mr. McGurn's math test in sixth grade, like I had. There are things that we can imi uh, imitate and copy that, from others that will help you be successful, though. So according to Webster's Dictionary, an imitation is a copy, a facsimile, or a counterfeit. So what you're, what's being copied must be of the highest quality or the purest and finest example since no matter how hard you try, it's not going to turn out exactly the way or exactly the same as the original. The purer or more genuine uh, the, of the quality, the better the, the copy. Think about it. If you take a photograph that's actually printed, not on your phone, and you run it through a photocopier, that first copy is going to look pretty good. It's going to still show the vibrance. It's still going to show the details. And you'll be able to tell what it is. Now copy that copy then copy that second copy. And by the third or fourth time, you've lost a lot of the detail. You've lost a lot of, the, uh, of what makes that image so special. You've, it's become bland, it's become fuzzy, it may be unremarkable or even unrecognizable. A lot of times it just comes out as just a blob at that point, right? Same thing if you're using a computer. You can select 
control V, control V, or control C, control V, or copy and paste into a document or an email or a text message. But what are you missing there? You start missing out on the context of what that came from. And if you do that, it, that, uh, that message may also become unrecognizable. So it's really no different in our lives and the examples we copy from and what, others are, and what we think others will copy from us. If we control C, control V, the wrong material, the meaning gets lost. A good portion of the book of 1 Kings gives warnings about what will happen if you follow and copy-paste the wrong things. The citizens of Judea, Nadab, Jeroboam, Zimri, Basha, Omri, and Ahab all copied the previous king's examples and the Bible specifically tells them that they did evil in the sight of the Lord. I don't want to do evil in the sight of the Lord. So those, those people, they lost everything. They lost their families. Their, their riches were destroyed and taken. Their kingdoms were destroyed. And oftentimes they were killed because of how they copied something that was a bad example to them. So let's take a look at our first text this morning in Romans, uh, first chapter of Romans 1, 28 through 29. Since they thought it, would fool, uh, it foolish to acknowledge God, he abandoned them, to do, uh, abandoned them to their foolish thinking and let them do things that should never be done. Their lives became full of every kind of wickedness, sin, greed, hate, envy, murder, quarreling, deception, malicious behavior, and gossip. So we have to be very careful what we copy. We need to look to the purest source. And if you're looking for a title of today's message, it's Control-C, Control-V. If you're in the computer world, it's copy-paste. Now, I don't have a theology degree. I don't have a... I never went to a Bible college. I don't have a formal, any kind of formal biblical training. In fact, I'm an engineer. I make my living solving problems that most people never knew existed. Uh, you have to use reason, reference, logic, experience, examples, and formulas to do my job. Sometimes it takes faith in a book. Sometimes it takes faith in what I've done in the past or trusting others to do the job that they need to do. I have amazing examples of people that I can copy and paste in leadership and experience in my life at work, in my life in the church, and elsewhere. And I will regularly copy C, or control C, control V, those, uh, those people into my life. So we might be thinking, what does that background have to do with this very moment? Well, I can tell you standing up here, it's about having examples in life to control C, control V. When it comes to speaking on faith, I do the same thing that I would hope and wish that you would do. And I would encourage you to do. And that is to listen to the Holy Spirit. Spend time in the Word. Spend time reading the Bible. Listen to that still, small voice. But more importantly, have a heart for God and spend time with Him. I'll control C, control V, what the Bible says all, the day, all day long. Now, do I always succeed in what it says to do? Obviously not. None of us do. I will listen to the mentors that I have and the words that they speak over me. I will copy what I can, but look to Jesus in all things. When it comes to people of faith, we have some pretty good examples of, uh, of those people to follow right here in this church. So let me show you something here. In Hebrews 13:7. it says, Remember your leaders who taught you the word of God. Think of all the good that has come from their lives and follow their example of faith. So given that, my microphone's coming off here, I'll control C, control V, Pastor Todd's heart for giving, his teaching, uh, his love for the community, his surrender to God's will, and love for God. And I will copy or paste that into my life. I'll control C, Eric and Conrad, Erica and Conrad's passion for youth and seeking of the Lord, and control V in that to, uh, into that into my life. I'll control C, some of our recent guest Chad Gonzalez's love, forgiveness, understanding, and control V in that, control V that into my life. I'll control C, 
some of Mark Hankins' fire desire for God to move mightily and control V, that in my life. It helps to have some good mentors. And if you don't have some, we have plenty here that you can look to. But if I were to stand up here today and try and uh, imitate them exactly, it wouldn't come out the same. I can't preach the way that Pastor Todd does. I'd end up being that third or fourth copy of the copy. However, what I can do is impart a passion or or, uh, show faith, show love, give uh, give freely and and seek God the way that the examples before me have been set. And I can attempt to be an imitation of the very original himself, Jesus. Jesus is the perfect example. He is the primary source that we can control C, control V into our lives. In 1 Peter uh, 2, 21 and 22, it says, For God called you to do good, even if it means suffering, just as Christ suffered for you. He is your example, and you must follow in his steps. He never sinned nor deceived anyone. He is, he was, and will ever be the perfect person. He forgave others. He elevated and empowered people. He prayed to his Father in heaven mightily, to a point that the night before he would, uh, went to, or was taken uh, away to be crucified, he prayed so hard that he sweated blood. He gave thanks in all things. He taught right from wrong. He sacrificed his life for all of mankind. So again, there is just no more perfect example. But beyond Jesus, the Bible gives us all kinds of tremendous examples of strong, moral, faithful, obedient, generous, repentant, humble, and courageous people who we can control C, control V. Let's look at David. We can repent and recognize our flaws when we know when we've done wrong. uh, That way we may may ask God for forgiveness or even forgiveness from others, even in the face of what would nearly be an unforgivable sin in the world. In Psalm 51, 4 through 6. Against you and you alone I have sinned. I have done what is evil in your sight. You'll be proved right in what you say, and your judgment against me is just. For I was born a sinner, yes, from the very moment my mother conceived me. But you desire honesty from the womb, teaching me wisdom even there. So we've we have examples, you know, David recognized that even as a, uh, in his uh, in mother's womb, that he was still not perfect. He wanted to constantly uh, improve himself and show himself to God. So we can uh, emulate his courage, faith, and obedience. We can also look at the courage, obedience, faith, and trust in God throughout the entire book of Joshua. We're not going to read the whole book. It's, it's a good one, though. I mean, if, you, if, if you're looking for some place to start, that is a, is, a, is a great book to start with. Not only with, jo- with Joshua's march around and the capture of Jericho, but in the power of the, of the last part of Joshua 24, 15. But for me and my, ha- and me and my family, we will serve the Lord. There's not a better thing in this world to do. Continuing on, we can, we can control C, control V, the humility that Gideon showed. We can control C, control V, what Samson did in using his natural gifts to glorify God. We can control C, control V, the fervent prayer like Paul and Silas did in prison. And we mentioned this morning when the earthquakes come and the hearts are shaken and the chains fall off. We can control C, control V, the boldness of Isaiah. We can control C, control V, the steadfastness of Daniel or the transformation of Simon into Peter or the courage of Esther or the love and the service to God of Mary. With examples like these, who would want to follow uh, the worthless idols in our fallen world? Do we want to copy them and be worthless examples ourselves? Or we would want to actually make a difference in the world? In Romans 12, 2, we are warned. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. 
Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. We can focus on the world, or we can focus on God's word and his truth. This comes especially true with parents. Parents, we teach and love our children from the, from the moment they are conceived, before they are born, and we hope to set an example for them to follow all their life. Children emulate what they see. So let's em- give them goodness to emulate. Let's give them love to emulate and to copy and paste into their lives. The Amplified Bible in, Pro- in Proverbs 13:22 says, A good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children, and the wealth of the sinner stored up for the hands of the righteousness, or righteous. From the time they are young, we want ch- our children to control C, control V, the examples that we teach and others may teach them. Right here in this church, we have some of the best teachers around for our children and our youth. Not only do we teach them how to live and survive and hope that when they go off on their own, like my own daughter is about to, that they can survive, they can thrive, they can find their own faith, and they can find meaning in their lives. And I contend that living a life of faith one that can be passed on to not only your children but your grandchildren would be one of the greatest inheritances that you could possibly leave. I think about the lessons that I learned from my own grandparents, both directly from them and indirectly that they taught my parents who then taught to me, who I hope I've shown to my children. They taught me to be faithful to God, to love your family, to give of your time to those in need, to do good things for others, to be faithful, to love your spouse, to love your children through all things, to forgive those who hurt you, something that's very tough in our world, especially today, to stand strong in the face of adversity, and to serve your community. My grandfather was um, somebody who was involved in Knights of Columbus and, some, and several other things and was and just a, a, a tremendous example of service. The big thing is to stop following the crazy and don't be envious. How many times do we look at others and think that I deserve that too? Or my family should be just that way too? Or my kids should be as perfect as those kids? My family should show the belief and show the faith in God that others show. My car should be nicer than theirs. My house should be nicer than my neighbor's. My career should be. My bank account should be. My marriage should be. My successes should be. My life should be. But if all you're thinking about is control C, control V, copying, pasting what others have in their life, you're forgetting the fact that they've grown up in that. That's what they know. You know what you know. You can't take all those parts that make them them and put it in your life and hope that it works. It doesn't do it doesn't work. And that brings us to control Z, or undo. You put put stuff into your life that doesn't work, get it out. If you find in your life that maybe you've control Z, control, or control C, control V, the wrong example, you still have time to follow a better example and control Z, the wrong direction you're going. David did so. Let's look at 1 Samuel 17, verses 38 and 40, or 38 through 40. And I know everybody's probably heard this one, but let's take a look. Then Saul gave to David his own armor, a bronze helmet and a coat of mail. David put it on, strapped the sword over it, and took a step or two to see what it was like, for he had never worn such things before. I can't go in these. There's his control Z. He protested the song, I'm not used to them, so David took them off. Rather than continuing on to certain death, for not only himself, but for everybody he loved and his entire community and his country, he controlled Zed and and went about it his own way. He then picked up five smooth stones from a stream, put them in his shepherd's bag. Then armed only with his staff and his sling, he started across the valley to fight the Philistine. David went back to his original example. The faith in God, which had been uh, with him countless times, the faith that he grew up with, the faith that he had examples of, the faith that he copied or control C, control V into his own life that had proven itself over and over again, as shown in, in the first in the verse before these in 1 Samuel 17, verse 37. 
The Lord who rescued me from the claws of the lion and the bear will rescue me from this Philistine. He was confident. He was faithful. He knew what he had to do, and he was unwavering. In trying to be Saul, David discovered that it would have meant his own death. His faith is worthy of a control C, control V in our lives, and possibly even a control B for bold, his bold faith. When desperate and in need, let's try control C, control V to tithing, giving, and volunteering. When you're under stress and trial, try a control C, control V for emotional control, passion, and peace with others. When you're stuck in life, control C, control V in faith. For all things, control C, control V, time in prayer and in the Bible. And you can even join our rock group here at the church where the opportunities are varied, but they're all there that you can control C, then you can find control V in friendship, faith, physicality, passions, and new experiences. Let's look at Matthew 5, verses 14 through 15. For you are the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives you light to everyone in the house. Be different from the world. Distinguish yourself in a humble way following God's example and God's standard. We live in the world, but we're not of the world. Build examples with others that they can control, Z, can control C, control V in their lives. Show them that faith, that love, that compassion, that steadfastness that we find. Build your relationships with your friends and your family and, and even uh, strangers that you come across. Work with, work with others to help them control V, all that is good and holy in their life. If you mess up, say so and ask for forgiveness. It happens. That's what a follower of Jesus would do. In the third letter from John, uh, verse, or chapter 1, verse 11, it says, Dear friend, do not let this bad example influence you. Follow only what is good. Remember those that do good. Uh, remember that those who do good prove that they are God's children, and those who do pr evil prove that they do not know God. We see again the example, the commandment to follow the example that's in front of us. Jesus Christ is the perfect example. In following him and following God's uh, ways, we can be the example to others. So in closing, let me leave you with a couple of things. Control Z, control V, Jesus, into your hearts. Let the blood of the spotless and perfect lamb cleanse you and make you whole. Let me end with this verse in Philippine, or Philippians 4, verses 8 through 9. And now to your brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Keep putting into practice all you've learned and receive from me everything you have heard, for, heard me and saw me doing. Then the God of peace will be with you. Control C, control V, the good things in life, that God will be with you and you can set that example to others. So again, thank you for being with us this morning. If you are new to the church, first time visitor, please see one of us back there at the Next Steps table. Um, be in prayer for Pastor and the groups that are, or the group that's down in Guatemala. Look forward to next weekend when our, our uh, guests will be in and all the great things coming up. Um, if you can help out next Saturday for the Zitzman Makeover, especially if you can't help out again in the following two weeks, let me know so we can get an idea who can be there and what tasks we need to, to pass out. And then again on the 29th will be the, the full makeover day at Zitzman and we can use all the help there. There will be furniture assembly and shelving assembly and painting and it's less physical tasks and more uh, the stuff up to make it all look nice and uh, get the school ready for the teachers to come back. If you haven't, been haven't seen Zitzman over there, just you know, as a reminder, they just did a, a giant addition to the school and have changed where the teacher's lounge is. 
So when the, hope, the plan is that when the teachers come back, that they are given an opportunity and a space that can, uh, they can use to for, um, you know, in between their classes to relax, to find some nourishment, to uh, you know, have a, a, a place to wind down for a little bit. So um, it should be a good time. And the fact that we can help out in the community like we did, we've done with the pool house years ago, um, what's some other things we've done? We've done several. The backpack giveaways, you know, all the things that we've done in the community over the years. This is just the next step in that. So, again, thank you for being with us this morning and look forward to seeing you again soon. Somebody else? Okay. You're dismissed. <laughs>